Hi, I'm Lior. Uh, what you're about to watch is pretty much my tattoo seminar. Uh, we shot a tattoo that I did from beginning to end with the initial sketch and everything um, to really try and show you all the stages, all the elements that I can really cover in one shot as far as how to make a nice grippy tattoo. Everything I'm going to show you or talk about in this DVD, um, I definitely don't claim to invent any of this. This is all product of hard work and years of really learning um, throughout the years. I've had two different apprenticeships. I still travel extensively and really in contact with a whole lot of tattoo artists and artists in general around the world. Very different styles, very different technique. Um, really anyone that's really giving me a time of the day I'll be more than happy you know at any given time I'm always open to hear more ideas uh, and more new techniques and stuff to really broaden my view um, what I'm gonna show you today again this is all collective information of stuff I acquired with the years um, I'm not really claiming that any of this is the right way. There is no right or wrong way to really approach this. At the end, the end result that really all matters and whatever gets you there, whatever may be the easiest way for you, I'll say go for it. What I'm really trying to do here is give you a few tips and stuff that hopefully will be in help at the end of the day. People deserve good tattoos. Um, I've been an apprentice for years. I think we're all apprentices for the rest of our life, so come with us. I'll try and do what I can do and give you a few pointers here. Hopefully it's what you're looking for. See you in our hell. What I'm going to do is actually show how I'm going to plan this whole tattoo layout and everything. Um, ahead of time. The reason we're doing this on a paper is actually going to give us a chance to show two different ways to do this. Whether you can Photoshop this, which is the same scenario of the tracing paper that we all used to do in order to get the final design, or what I usually prefer to do is have a printout of the area I'm going to work on. Uh, by doing that, most of the work that I do is actually drawn on the skin. First of all, you get a better view um, as a printout. It's almost a thumbnail of the area and what it's going to look like from pretty much not even down the block, but half a block away, which, at least in my opinion, makes a good tattoo if it's nice and bold and have a really good look, you know, from far away as well as from close. Um, by doing that, you can actually see, which is the first step, I'm going to actually mark down all the areas here with the bones, the muscle structure, everything like that to actually get a better flow and layout on the area. Um, what we're doing today is a devil girl. I'm gonna do her face. I'm probably gonna choose to do it fairly big. It's gonna be a part on her back. Um, I really don't wanna block the area. I really like to do uh, what I like to call basically finish for now, open for later. You never know when the client's gonna come back or want a bigger piece you definitely don't want to block the area and then have to back paddle later on by doing that if I'm actually marking what's obvious here I'm gonna start marking down where all the bones sit and the spine going right here in the middle pretty much with the muscle structure that's something you can actually have a bit of a help here if you pick up any book that uh, describes the anatomy of, uh, of people and what I'm doing is actually we're gonna work on our shoulder and really what I'm doing is marking down a few general areas that stick out the most Approaching the tattoo, I like to work into the skin other than on top of the skin. It's a common mistake a lot of tattoo artists get. We're all very, very concentrated in uh, what we're doing and the technical aspect of it. Try to make a good tattoo, whether it's like smooth shading, 
whatever that may be and we're really trying to focus on that and have a tendency to get a bit more of a tunnel vision there sometimes and by doing that it actually give me a little more of a leeway with working on later on the first thing I see in a design like this is girls pretty bony and this little bone here really sticks out uh, more than anything since we're doing a face I'm probably going to use that for the nose it's almost a little more of a sculpting into the skin other than really again drawing on top of it in real life when you do this in person and draw on a person I would tend to uh, make them go a little forward stand a few steps ahead of me so I can get a better look at the overall picture basically so again so I'm not blocking the back um, even squint your eyes a little bit really just get a rough idea for it and then have them come back and go from there while I'm drawing on the skin or here uh, at any given time every few minutes I will kind of like look back at it to make sure I don't get the tunnel vision to make sure I don't really uh, get too deep into this and kind of like forget about the big picture and this one for example like I said I've blocked pretty much the general areas what I'm doing right now is marking really quick you can actually do that with a different color it'll probably be a little easier and since I'm doing a face I'm really using one of the most basic ways of drawing a face a good old circle a few lines to mark down all the areas center line and just pretty much go from there I really like the 45 degree angle on the face the main reason again it's a very good uh, it's very good for a light source um, I will explain more in detail later as far as the shading and how it all works I think for the light source it's actually it works perfect because if you actually shoot the light from any direction you get one of the sides of the face which is almost completely in the dark and more extreme light source gives it a really nice flow which really flows well with the body um, at any given time of course I have a few printouts here of girls faces to get a better idea for the details and everything um, as I go along same thing you analyze the picture the same way I just did this um, go back to the basic shapes and really think in those forms there's a few books and stuff that I will recommend later they can again help you do all this and make everything a little easier like everything else practice makes perfection or at least we try all right what I'm gonna do with this at this part of the game I pretty much have what I want here I will probably take some of it here to help the overall flow of the piece and again keep it a little more open for future if and when she does choose to have a back piece this piece will look very nice stand alone but the way we're gonna do this is at any given time of course you can even have a hand here or something like that and really go from there and have a much bigger image for the back piece it's not really going to have to compromise anything in the future we scanned this image with the general shapes and everything overlaid it over the original image and really lower substantially lower the saturation what it does it gives me the same basic idea much lighter for me to work on and do the more refined sketch it's basically the same effect that uh, all tattoo artists are familiar with by keep putting tracing papers on, on top of a rough sketch and just going to the next level and refining it as you go um, I do pretty much the same thing only I pretty much Photoshop it and again the main reason is so I can still look how everything is laid out um, on the area and see all the areas here and at the end when you actually finish a sketch like this I find it a little easier to show the client what I have in mind and a little easier to really show them how 
it's going to be positioned on their body other than showing them um, a rough idea on a flat piece of paper with a circle for elbow or whatnot. Um, I think it's a little easier for them to visualize it that way. At this stage of the game, what we're going to do is actually start blocking the face. Start putting the eyes where they belong. Ever nice and angry like a double girl should be. Now again I'm really drawing this pretty loose right now and then I can really go from there. Now usually you have the rough shape of the circle for the face. When you draw a face that I find a lot harder if you're actually uh, draw all the details first before you draw the contour of the whole face a lot of people will draw the contour and then try to kind of like go in there and you will end up with some sort of a picasso in a way of floating elements on the face where i'd rather do the face and then go from there so devil girl, so her cheekbones will be a little further up than what a guy will. Again, all these things, um, I'm really not touching too much about the artistic part of it as far as how to draw a face. Mainly because it's very individual, whatever really guideline you want to follow, the end result is all that really matters. And everyone have their own way of doing it, but the information is definitely out there if it's books or dvds or really just viewing movies and stuff like that black and white movies for uh realizing all the the right positioning the right light source of things you know whether you're choosing to do a more dense light source or whatnot what i'm really doing at this stage is drawing general thing of the face just general um guideline and contours of the face with all that's in it and this is gonna be a pretty much a rough sketch when you draw it on the skin directly obviously I go for a lot tighter details and everything throughout the process when I do this I'm not too worried about the final final positioning of things meaning I'll give myself about a quarter to a half inch leeway with the positioning for stuff I might have missed in the photo of the area and once I actually see her in order again to make everything fit in the best possible way I might still tweak a few items or move them um, as necessary to make it a good tattoo but this is really as much as we need here what I might do at this point I'm really trying to show as much as possible out of the horns and the whole design but don't be afraid to cut through it if you need to don't be afraid to really be a little more suggestive with your drawing um, you don't really need all the details on every element in order for people to understand what it is. Um, sometimes in reality it's actually a lot of drop shadows and overlapping images and elements is really what makes things look more real. this state of the game it's really kind of refining my rough sketch I really know pretty much what we're going for right now and I'm really this is pretty much the final stage of this thing as far as the sketch concern and it's really just uh, 
enhancing those little things like the eyelashes of course the way everything relates to each other yeah you can see I'm really blocking some areas there's a few specific areas I've heard that again from a few people who did go to art school one of the main things on the face is this little triangle here between the two eyes and the nose if you nail that in a correct and realistic way it's a smooth sail from there because the rest of it even if you've done a bit of a mistake or something not 100% realistic it will still look real as well as shooting the right light source on the design will pretty much do the same effect um, you can see how everything is kind of forming up um, in the tattoo I approach it a little different I'll go into that later in the tattoo process in the drawing I'm still trying to kind of block some areas to dictate the overall look of the piece and to give it a lot more depth um, one of the things we'll go over later too is making sure that you really follow your skills of grays um, if the light source hits from here in reality all this area will be shaded from dark to light but even the lighter parts on it will not really bear skin as of the area where the light hits it I will go into this a little more in detail later and show you really how that scale works especially in tattoos and that is really one of the key points in making a design look more realistic in black and gray now as you can see I'm rendering this I'm really trying to enhance a few things that a little bit of squint around the eye that makes it look a lot angrier that little bit of expression goes a very long way again it's not really it's those little imperfection in the face um, that makes it look more real But yeah, same thing with this, with the expression around the eyes, a little bit around the nose. This will probably be a little lighter in the tattoo, but it works here to really portray what I'm trying to show. Same thing around the mouth, even a bit of a movement in the mouth, a bit of a snare really goes a long way here when you make stuff look evil, especially for this style of tattoo. And you definitely want as much expression as possible. You're definitely trying to portray here like something is as dead as it may look, it is alive and coming towards you. And this all works between the dense light source, the drop shadows and really those little subtle things in the face more than anything go a long way and put a lot more of an expression into it this is more of a general one like I said I'm definitely going to use the hair for flow here and to cut through the piece I think first of all with this and the drop shadow on the hair will give us a lot of very nice dimension as well as keep this whole piece open for the future if and when she chooses to do something bigger okay. now again like I said once I'm gonna position this tattoo I might change a few little details there but this is a really this will be more than enough for now to really first of all show the client what we're going for, how it's positioned and explain for future reference what can be done with this and why this is not really blocked do the horns like I said a little smaller horns will have quite some textures on them which will really play well in contrast to her face which is a little more smooth I will go over this later but that little contrast will really
come into play to enhance one another. Which is pretty much there for now. Like I said, there will be a few more adjustments we'll do as we go, but this will be enough for her to read and for me to read. After doing this, I usually don't do as many devil girls, so it obviously looks a little more like a dude. And what I would do to this after a second look at the overall picture, I would shrink it down a little bit, again for the horns and everything to really fit in place. Um, go ahead and focus more on the reference we have of girls and really try to nail it down. Those little details going to make her more feminine, um, but still evil, but in a little more subtle way. What I did, using the same, le the same stages that we did before with the original marker in different colors, blocking the areas and everything, go over the whole thing just like we just did. I redrew this, I made her face a little different, a little smaller. Uh, with the eyes you can see there's a little more of a movement going on there. There's a little more uh, feeling of kind of like capturing something in time other than a still picture. This little Hitler thing won't really be here. It looks a little heavier. A um, few things again. It's a rough sketch. Will be adjusted in the tattoo. Um, and the right use of scales of black and gray and everything. Which we'll go over once we do the tattoo. This is pretty much what we're going for. Again, usually I will draw this directly on the skin. Sometimes I'll make a little more of a sketch ahead of time. Um and pretty much go from there so once we have this we'll probably either draw it on our skin or stencil it do the few little adjustments we need and just go from there yeah oh yeah and praise satan don't, don't forget don't forget who you made a pact with What I'm going to show you here is a scale of black and gray. Um, this thing here is really one of the biggest fundamentals of creating a full 3D shading of an object uh, and making it really look as realistic as possible according again to the light source and the density of light that you're hitting with. Basically what it is you gotta keep in mind let's say we deal with 10 different levels of black and gray 10 different shades of gray we're gonna have black being one and white being 10 again you can have this um, as many levels as you want as many different kind of shades this is more of a comprehending how this really works a matter with that scale if you have a sphere for example you have a ball here you want to make it look 3d as you can see obviously the direct light source hits right here which means this is a 10 that whole side here because it's in direct contact with the light you probably want to shade here from 4 which is closer to black but it's a darker shade to a 10. You definitely don't want to use solid black you definitely don't want to use something as dense 
as you move down to the scale as you go to the darker part of the sphere you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna follow that same scale and what you're gonna do is the lightest spot here will be a six at the most and the darker spot will be a one which is solid black basically if you do this and you really follow that scale as you go with the shading it's gonna give you a whole different dimension and a whole different understanding of black and gray and 3d um, drawing or tattooing best way to explain this will be in a picture to show you how all this comes into play picture of this handsome fellow here you can clearly see where the light hits here it hits from right here you can see how some parts here get direct hit by the light which make almost completely white which will be a 10 on your scale and even the darker spot here even where the hair lays and stuff like this um, different object the eye even this is not a hundred percent solid black therefore it'll be four five six on your scale on the other hand you can see the darker side of the face here where the light doesn't really hit it even the lightest spots here are actually a lighter gray by doing this in a tattoo or a drawing and really blocking the area correct and using all those different levels and all those different shades of gray you're really gonna get a lot fuller picture and a fuller image um, and you can just apply this scale or any scale like it to any little thing or detail that you're doing in the drawing um, again go back to the basic shadings of it and the basic um, figure of it the basic shape of it and really shade off that then you can go back and do almost like a blanket shading over it and go over the whole thing with the same idea keep in mind that the the more dense the light is the more actual skin in the tattoo or white in a drawing you will have and vice versa with the darker area don't be afraid to shade it that dark because that is what will create that contrast is really what makes an image look realistic I'm going to show you one more quick example on this done in a tattoo again you can see the whole area here in the head 45 degree angle there's actually skin on the nose which is all the way up front couple other areas and actually in the other half of the face everything is shaded all the way to the last spot there is no skin left and by doing that moving back from it it immediately gives the whole image a much fuller a much more three-dimensional look Uh, I'm gonna point out really quick to a few books and thing here that really helped me along the way. I'm pretty much self-taught when it comes to drawing. Um, this is all really a matter of practice. There's a whole lot of books that I read with the years um, that really helped me. Gray's Anatomy. It works for doctors. It works for you too. Very good book to analyze and really go down into detail how the human body works. Um, teaches you anywhere from how things operate to what they look like, what textures, what they're made of. Bernie Hogarth. Bernie Hogarth is the man. This is a dynamic figure drawing. This guy has quite a few books drawing dynamic hands, drawing the human head. Um, I might not 100% agree with everything that he teaches. However, um, I've read all his books and this guy is really approaching everything as a mathematician um, he will put things for you in the most simplistic way uh, and really give you the pointers that really may help you in life with again going back to the basic shapes of thing how everything is built from the head to the hands to all the way the dynamic movement of figure and really give you all the tricks in the book of how to create a photorealistic look of any element of the body uh, and how it all relates to each other definitely highly recommended Mr. Hogarth drawing the human head will be the first one facial expressions 
This book will touch on various facial expression, really very broad ones, uh, for girls, for guys, for kids, for different ages, how things um, change on your face with the ages, um, how things change in every specific expression, and how everything moves on the face, how any little thing relates to each other, um, and how to make it all move. This book is very, very good, very good key points, very good pointers um, and little tricks to really take it to the next level and make your drawing look very um, alive, give it that spark and that life you want in there. Guy Aitchison, Reinventing the Tattoo. Um, if there's one person in this industry that I can definitely call a teacher, it would be Guy Aitchison. He's written quite a few books with throughout the years. He has just taken all his material, put it all together in one book um, with DVD and everything. His book will really give you a very good rundown on all the technical aspects of tattooing from how to do color to black and gray all the way from applying and designing the actual tattoo, applying the stencil all the way to the final result and how to take care of it. One of the main reasons I really like his book, Guy's been one of the first people to really suggest and really show people how to make Photoshop work for your benefit in tattoos. Um, he really taught me a lot and I would highly recommend it because like I showed you in the DVD and we'll show you later, a lot of the stuff that I do, especially in the initial sketch, are done on Photoshop. It gives me a much broader view of what I'm going to do for the tattoo. It gives me a lot of option to really integrate all sorts of different elements and photorealistic reference into the design. And at the end of the day, it gives me a really good view of what the tattoo will look like from far away or in 10 years time with the right kind of blare tool. You can still see that. So definitely highly recommended. Other than that, any black and gray artist, go watch black and white movies. Really, like I said before, nothing beats reality, nothing beats real life reference and a real photo. Um, needless to say, all the good old universal horror, uh, the original monster movies from the 30s, they're all shot in a very German expressionist way, which means very dense, very uh, very strong highlights and uh, light source and very good placement and use of shadows and very good use of specific elements and people or objects in relation to each other and to the light source and a much creepier atmosphere.